Neodymium magnets are extremely powerful rare earth magnets that became a bit of a cultural sensation in the early 2010s when a number of toy manufacturers, in particular a company named Buckyballs, began to sell sets of neodymium balls. The powerful attraction between the balls lent itself to building all kinds of interesting shapes and structures and was often marketed as a stress reliever for adults. The magnet toys were a huge success and became a staple of office culture around the country. However, it was also often the subject of controversy due to safety issues. By 2012, nearly 3,000 people found themselves in the emergency room due to the accidental ingestion of these toys. Well, what if, instead of putting them in your mouth, you put them in your dick? Well, that's exactly what this Redditor did in what was named r slash today I fucked up's biggest fuck up of 2012. I've been dying to tell you about this for months, and now I finally can. What I got right here in my hands is the official Justin Wang U2's figurine. It's available August 9th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I know what you're thinking. I specifically told their designers to make this figurine as difficult to fit in jars as they possibly could, so you know, try your best. I was also really particular about the details of my fit in this figure, if you know, you know, and the packaging has some little easter eggs that will make longtime viewers of the channel happy. And buying the figure directly supports the channel. And it's limited edition, so once it's sold out, it's gone forever. If you want a chance to get a free one, though, we are doing a giveaway. Just go to justinwang.youtubes.com. And once again, that's August 9th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today I fucked up by combining magnets with my urethra. NSFW. I am the luckiest dumbass ever to live. So, I had the weekend at home to myself. My flatmate had gone away, a little me time was scheduled. Now, I like to experiment. I'd heard about sounding, sticking things into the urethra, and thought I'd give it a go. Sounding, I recall, being something that I learned about when I came across the website Kids in the Sandbox, and if you know what that site is, now you too know what is meant by sounding. And if you don't know what it is, Google it at your own risk. Initial experiments were unsuccessful. Chopsticks were a little large for my virgin pee hole. No big deal. I'm sure I could find something else. Now, a little history. Do you know what buckyballs are? They are a type of office toy, really popular a couple years back. They are small, spherical, strong magnets. Pretty neat, they can be combined into all sorts of cool shapes. Also, they form into a lovely string. Can you see where this is going? Well, wouldn't you know it, a string of buckyballs slides up the urethra just perfectly, like it was made for it. It's a beautiful thing. I could pass away a happy afternoon plumbing the depths. These things can go a long way, and the further they go, believe me, the better it feels. Readers. Readers who have owned buckyballs. Do you see my error? Do you see how this delicate chain of balls, so exquisitely suited to its purpose, holds my doom? So, evening rolls around, I decide on one last plunge. This cop is a day from retirement. This space miner has discovered a nest of funny-looking eggs. This hitchhiker is rolling up to the Bates Motel, and this is one last plunge. In they go. 10, 20, 30 beads. More. 40, 50, I don't count. I don't care. Feels good. I feel at this point I must explain a little bit more about buckyballs. I've described them as a chain. This is not so. Each ball is separate, only held to the next by its magnetism. And what do magnets love to do? They love to stick together. Remember this. I did not. My last plunge, my final dive continues. Soon, better than half a meter of magnets is inside me. I am through the prostate, through the sphincter, in the bladder. I push on. I hit the top of the bladder. I am possessed. I push on. The buckyballs, the magnets, start to bend and curve back towards themselves. Still, I push on. Click. I hear a sound from deep within me. The sound of two magnets meeting and mating. Suddenly, my beautiful chain of balls is a tangled, magnetized lump. In my bladder. This is the worst possible thing. 
but now I have lengthened my tail over long. Panic stations were activated, rationality and sobriety returned, and I started to pull. Gently, oh so gently I pulled. This chain, this thin chain of balls was still held together only by magnetism and hope, and now there was resistance. At any moment the chain could break, would break, was certain to break, and if it did, there would be no hope. Nothing short of surgery would remove them. Still, the chain held all the way down, right down to the penis. Did you know the smallest diameter part of the whole system is the end of the penis? I do. Oh, I do. It's stuck. A magnetic lump of steel, a centimeter wide, stuck an inch from freedom, locked behind my penile gates. The chain broke. Many times the chain broke, but the blockage was so close to the end that, with care, it could be reattached, only to break again. Of note here is the pinching. I hope you do not know the pain of a thin layer of penile skin being pinched repeatedly between two powerful magnets. And to demonstrate what he's talking about, allow me to explain that it's possible for neodymia magnets to break bones. There was blood. Even now it throbs. The end, however, was in sight. The magnet clump was out of the danger zone, the operation zone. It was in my penis. I could control it. I could win. And with the help of a knife and a ballpoint pen lid, I did. TLDR, I'm not sure I'd advise sticking 74 magnets up your dick. And here's the thing. Just because he managed to get the main chain out doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, he didn't lose one of these balls up in his bladder or somewhere along the way. So, you know, he wasn't gonna do it, but Reddit urged him, please, sir, go to the fucking doctor. And he eventually did. Greetings once again, all ye dwellers of Today I Fucked Up. My last thread caused some considerable comment. Many of the comments were along the lines of, Old man, you really ought to get to a doctor to look at your area. This, combined with a certain odd sensation in my bladder, made me concerned enough to consider it. My main worry was that there were balls left inside me and without an x-ray I would never truly know. So last Friday I went. I made an appointment at the GUM clinic. GUM, genital urinary medicine clinics, are excellent for those, like me, who perhaps do not want too much documented in their permanent medical notes. They are, much like here, anonymous-ish. I arrive, I fill in a form, surprisingly enough none of the questions were enormously relevant to my case, and in I go to speak to the nurse. At this point, I was concerned that I would just freeze up and not be able to string together anything remotely coherent. Oddly enough though, it turns out that, again much like here, Semi-anonymity removed all barriers of shame. I was eloquent. I was articulate. She was confused. She went and got the doctor. She was confused. This was new to her, but she was as old as God and pretty hard ass, so she also mocked me appropriately. Evidently something above the pay grade of the nurse. I had it coming. I didn't mind. She examined me. It was extraordinarily non-sexual, and Slightly fumbling for ideas, tried using the demonstration buckyballs I had brought along to detect any magnetism from the outside. This worked exactly as well as you might expect. The next step was an x-ray of my gonads. Poor little fellows hadn't yet been through enough abuse it seems, and a dose of gamma rays was their next challenge. Thing with x-rays is, they don't normally do them for STDs. So I was set up to x-ray with a brown paper envelope with a letter inside, which I did not look at, but which presumably read, This guy... I was taken aside, ushered past the queue of old creaky people, and set up. The poor lady couldn't say penis, which caused some troubles when I had to arrange myself for the scan. We finally got some things sorted. It's important not to have overlapping layers, you know? Anyway, the part y'all came here for. The x-ray was negative. I have no buggy balls inside me. Thank all the deities, an operation would have been the only way to remove them if there had been any stragglers. I hadn't realized how nervous I was until the good news was relayed to me by old frowny piss takey doctor lady. I punched the air. I may have even vocalized some sort of aw yeah. She was unmoved. She told me not to do it again. 
Listen to frowny old doctor ladies. TLDR. Surprised old lady got lucky. P.S. Apologies, this update doesn't really have the pop of the previous entry, does it? Alas, with updates, it is ever thus. Dipping greedily back into the depravity trough and coming up dry. And if you look at some of the x-rays that are floating around on the internet, you'll see that this particular buckyball excursion was not a rare case. And because of issues like this, in 2012, the sale of spherical magnet toys was banned by the US government. However, this ban was overturned in 2016, so if you'd like to find yourself some buckyballs to enjoy, be my guest, just, you know, I wouldn't recommend sticking them up your pee hole. Actually, maybe I'll put them in my Amazon store, but I guess that means doubly don't put them up your fucking pee hole and blame me on it. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Oh,